Hi, it's Tash from The Form Filler. In this comprehensive step-by-step -step video, I'm going to show you how I renewed my British passport. This video covers absolutely everything, from the online application process, to uploading my photo, to paying for my passport, to posting my old passport to the passport office for them to be canceled, and then receiving my new and old passports back from the passport office as well. I really hope this video helps you. And if you do find it helpful, please do give this video a like and consider subscribing. Now, let's get started. I'm on the official gov.uk passport renewal page. I'll leave the link to this in the description box below for you. So it says here, use this service to apply for, renew, replace or update your passport and pay for it online. And it is worth remembering that if your passport is burgundy or has European Union on the cover, you can continue to use it until it expires. In my case, my Burgundy passport has just under six months left before it expires, and that's why I'm renewing it now. That's because as a rule of thumb, most countries won't allow you entry if your passport has less than six months on it. So that is worth bearing in mind. How long it takes? In this sublink, you can check out how long it takes to get a passport before you apply. And if you do need a passport urgently, you can click on that link to find out more about the online premium or one week fast track services. And of course, it's still worth mentioning that you should not book travel until you have a valid passport. That's because your new passport will not have the same number as your old one. And at the end of this application, you'll be paying. So do make sure you have a credit or debit card to hand. And this is the cheapest option for applying for a passport as opposed to by post, which is just under 10 pounds more expensive. But as it says at the bottom, other ways to apply, you can pick up passport application forms from your local post office and apply by post or use the post office check and send service. It does, however, take longer to apply by post than online. So the post office does handily have an assistance service available as well for people that may still not feel comfortable doing this online. So do bear that in mind as well that you do have that option if you'd prefer that rather than applying online. But this is the online application. So we're gonna go ahead and click on start now. So as the application begins, it says, if you're applying on behalf of an adult or child, answer these questions with their details rather than your own. So question one is, do you live in the UK? So for myself, yes, I live in England. So I'm gonna click on yes, and then click on continue. So here are the steps laid out for how the online application is going to play out. So how to apply. Step one, get a digital passport photo. We'll show you how to get a digital passport photo. Step two, provide application details. And again, if you're applying on behalf of an adult or child, fill in their application details rather than your own. Step three, find out what documents you need to send. We will tell you what documents you need to send. Step four, pay for your passport. A standard passport is 75 pounds and 50 pence for an adult and 49 pounds for a child. Step five, if required, get someone to confirm your identity. We'll tell you if we need someone to confirm your identity and they can confirm your identity online without a printed photo. And step six, track your application. We'll send you updates by email or text. You can also log into track progress on your application, check what documents you need to send and where to send them and ask someone to confirm your identity if required. And by clicking on I need help doing things online, it says here that you can call the passport advice line and ask for help. So it has the telephone number, the text phone number and the opening times listed there for you. So there is help available as well. So if you do get stuck at any point and you don't know how to proceed, do give those numbers a call. That is what the service is there for. Right, so after having taken all that in, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed by clicking on continue. So here it's asking for my date of birth and it has the example of how it's supposed to be entered. So day, month and year. Once that's entered, I'm gonna go ahead and click on continue. So how to get a digital passport photo? A photo with a code. To do this, you can go to a photo shop or booth and choose to get a code with your photo. It is simple to use in your online passport application. You'll have the option to enter the code to access your photo. And after entering the code, you'll see your photo on the screen. You will then be able to check your photo and submit it. And your photo will be added directly to your application. And as it says here in the bottom, in a shop, you can also get a digital photo taken by a photographer that is emailed to you. And here in blue, it does say photos from a booth or shop are more likely to pass our checks. But there's also an option to take a digital photo at home. You'll need someone to help you take a photo using a digital camera, smartphone or tablet. 
And in this example, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be taking a photo on my smartphone and uploading it. I personally think it's much more easier and way more cost effective. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on continue. So the next section is about the photo, getting a digital photo. You can either select that I have a code to enter or I'll take or upload a digital photo. I'd rather prefer to take the photo at home. So I'm going to pick the second option and then click on continue. And very helpfully, there's guidance here. So how to take a digital passport photo. If your photo doesn't meet the rules, you may have problems with your application or when you travel. Photos for adults. Use a plain light colored background with no texture or patterns and no objects behind you. And here we can see that it has both the correct and incorrect ways to take a photo with regards to a background. Next up, even lighting and no shadows. So you need a balanced light with no shadows on your face or behind you. And the tip is it's best to use natural sunlight, for example, facing a window. And again, we have examples of correct and incorrect ways to take a photo when it comes to lighting and shadows. Standing in the right position, you need to stand 0.5 meters away from your background, which helps to reduce shadows. The person taking the photo should stand 1.5 meters from you, and the photo should include your head, shoulders, and upper body. And please don't crop your photo, it will be done for you. And here we can see the ideal photo that the passport office is looking for. Plain expression and face in full view. You should face front on to the camera. Do not smile or frown. And make sure your eyes are open and mouth is closed. And your photo should be a good likeness and taken within the last month. And so from these photos, we can see the difference between having a plain expression, making sure we're not smiling or looking away from the camera. After that, making sure you're not wearing any headwear unless it is for religious or medical reasons. Do ensure that your eyes are fully visible, that the hair is away from your face and eyes, and to take your glasses off if you can. And in, from my personal experience, a good way to gauge this is that once you've taken the photos, look at them and make sure that you can clearly see the whites of your eyes. If you can see the whites of your eyes, it means that your eyes are clearly in shot and that there is no shadowing around your eyes. But if you do need to keep your glasses on, your eyes must be visible without any glare or reflections and sunglasses or tinted glasses are not allowed. So we'll go ahead and click on continue. And here in the next section, it says upload your photo. Your photo will go through a basic technical check. Your photo must be in color, unaltered by computer software, a JPG or JPEG file, and at least 50 kilobytes and no more than 10 megabytes in size. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on choose my photo. And the way that I approached this was I had a family member take a photo of myself on my smartphone and I had them take several photos just to make sure that I wasn't blinking in one of them. Then I initially looked through them on my phone just to make sure that they did comply and I was happy with them. And then what I would do to make it as easy as possible to get it onto my computer or laptop, I simply emailed them to myself from my smartphone. Pretty instantaneous and the easiest way for me to just get the photos onto my computer so I could then upload them. Right, so I'm gonna click on choose your photo and that allows me to upload the photo from my documents folder. So I just select the photo and then click on open. And here it says upload your photo, uploading the image with a percentage mark, processing image. And so here, interestingly, it says the photo result is fair and that your photo may be suitable for a new passport. Ideally, I want to get the photo result into the green area for good. The photo, to be honest, does look good, but I'll take this reading into account and I'm gonna go ahead and click on get a different photo. And when I do that, it just takes me back to the previous page and I'll just reselect, I'll take or upload a digital photo again and click on continue. Scroll again through the guidance and click on continue. And then again, choose your photo. And what I'll do again, I'll just select an alternative photo. So once I've done that, I'll click on open and here it is uploading the image again. And great, this time around, it says the photo result is good. As it says here, photos with a good rating are the most likely to be suitable for a new passport. So it was just a matter of trial and error. I thought the previous photo looked good as well, but it only came up with a fair result. So I thought, let me try again. And again, the alternative photo I uploaded looked pretty much the same to me, but for whatever reason, the system chose this one over the previous one. So now that I've got the good rating, I can go ahead and click on continue and proceed with the application. And it says here, do you want to submit this photo? By continuing, you confirm that your photo meets the photo rules. 
I obviously want my passport application to be processed without a hitch. And because I got the photo into the green field, I trust that it has met the photo rules and I'm happy by looking at the photo that I've complied with everything as well. So now I'm going to click on yes, this photo meets the rules and then click on continue. Have you had a UK passport before? As this is a passport renewal, I'm going to select yes and then click on continue. Is your passport lost or stolen? As I have my current passport to hand, it's not lost or stolen. So I'm going to click on no and then continue as this is a straightforward renewal. When was your passport issued? So here it provides us with day, month and year boxes. And very helpfully on the right, it says where to find your passport issue date. You'll find it on your bio page. That's the page with your photo and your name and your date of birth on it. And near the bottom, it says date of issue. And you simply want to take the date that's printed on that page and enter it into these boxes and then click on continue. Is your passport damaged? I believe my passport is not damaged, but let's see by clicking on this blue text here, what kind of damage matters. It states here that HM passport office classes your passport as damaged if you can't read any of your details. The laminate cover has come away. There's an ink or chemical spillage on any of the pages. There's discoloring of your personal details, for example, your name or date of birth, or on the official observations page. Any of the pages are ripped, missing or detached. The chip is damaged or showing through the back cover. This applies to e-passports only. There's any damage to the back cover, for example, ripped, bite marks or staple holes, or there's excess water damage. By taking all of these classes into consideration, my passport is in fairly tip top condition. So I'm happy to declare that my passport is not damaged. I'm going to go ahead and select no and then click on continue. Do you have any passports from other countries? I don't hold dual or multiple citizenships of other countries. And so I only hold a UK passport. So in my scenario, I'm going to select no and then click continue. Apply for a UK passport. Based on your answers, you're applying for an adult renewal. If you want to change the name on this passport, we'll ask for the details later on. The cost for a standard passport is £75 and 50 pence. How long does it take? You can find out by clicking on check how long it will take to get your passport. And when I do that, it opens up another tab, which says find out how long your passport application is likely to take. And by scrolling down, it says processing times in the UK, allow up to 10 weeks to receive your passport. So I've closed that tab now. If it does take 10 weeks to process the passport application, I am at least aware of that and I don't have any upcoming travel. Therefore, I'm not going to be taking any fast track options. I'm going to stick with the proposed time of up to 10 weeks to process the passport application. And again, it does reiterate here, do not book travel until you've got your passport. And before we continue, it says to complete your application, you'll need to fill in your application details, pay for your passport and send us your old passport. My burgundy passport is still valid, but it just has less than six months validity left on it. Therefore, the passport office will need to receive my old passport in order to cancel it before they can issue me with a new passport. And now by taking all of that information into consideration, I'm going to go ahead and proceed and click on continue. Old passport details. Passport number. So the passport number is in the top right hand corner of the bio page of your passport. And here's an example of where you can find that passport number. What I'm going to simply do is verbatim copy that number and put it into this box. Following that expiry date. So again, on the bio page, just below the issue date that we entered previously is the expiry date. Once again, we're going to take that information and enter it into these three respective boxes. And below that is the exclamation mark. It says you'll need to send us your old passport so we can cancel it. And here again, if you may have skipped or answered incorrectly and your passport is lost or stolen, you do still have the option to report it as lost or stolen because this is just a simple renewal of my current passport, which I do have in my possession. Now that all the information is entered, I'm going to go ahead and proceed and click on continue. So new passport details. First section here is title. So in my case, it's going to be Mr. And then when it comes to first middle names and last name, I'm going to simply copy and paste the information that's on my current passport. So I'll put my first name and then I'll put my last name in the respective boxes. And then I'm asked, 
Did you use this name on your old passport? As my name has not changed, I'm going to click on yes. Nothing has changed from my old passport going into my new passport. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on continue. Have you ever used any other names? For example, a maiden name, a previous married name, or a name you were given at birth and changed later. You must tell us every name you've used. In my case, I've never used any other names, so I'm going to select no, and then click on continue. Next up is gender. So I have a choice of female or male. I'm gonna go ahead and select male, and then click on continue. Were you born in the UK? I was born in the UK, so I'm gonna select the yes option, and then it says town of birth, as written on your old passport. So I'm going to look at the bio page again on my old passport. As I was born in London, that's what was written on my old passport. I'll just put that again as London and then click on continue. Home address. Tell us where you live. We'll send your new passport and return any documents to this address. They will, however, arrive separately. So I'm going to enter the postcode into this box and then click on find address. And then from the drop down box, I'll select my door number from the addresses that have been found and then click on continue. Contact details. It is best to use a phone that you will have access to. We may contact you if there's a problem with your application. So here I'm going to type in my email and then retype it to confirm it. And then I'm also going to add my mobile number as well. And then go ahead and click on continue. Get updates. Find out what's happening with your passport. For example, when it's on its way. You can choose both. There is no charge. As it's optional, you can choose if you want to receive the updates or not. I will elect to get both email and text updates and then click on continue. And now I have a choice about the actual passport. Passport size. I have two options. I can either have a standard 34 page passport, which costs 75 pounds and 50 pence, or a frequent traveler 50 page passport, which costs 85 pounds and 50 pence. Furthermore, if you're blind or visually impaired, we can add a braille sticker that reads passport, your name and passport expiry date. So I'm not going to tick the box that says I'm blind or visually impaired and I need a braille sticker. But from the options for passport size, I'm going to go ahead with a standard 34 page passport, which costs 75 pounds and 50 pence. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on continue. Signing a new passport. All passport holders aged 12 and older must sign the new passport when they receive it. I understand that and I will sign my passport. So I'm going to select that option and I'm going to go ahead and click on continue. Who is the passport for? You can only apply for someone else age 16 or over if they don't have mental or physical capacity and you are legally responsible for them. This passport application is for myself. So I'm going to select me and then continue. Check this application. So here is a summary of all the information that we've entered so far. Starting with old passport details, we've got the passport number, the passport expiry date, and whether the passport is damaged or not. So it's really important to take this opportunity to, to very closely look at your old passport and make sure that the information that we provided is correct. There's no typos. There are many numbers in the passport number and it is easy to make a typo. So it's really important to make sure we thoroughly check everything is correct. And then moving on, we're gonna go ahead to the new passport details. So confirming the title, the name, that the name hasn't changed from previously, the gender, the date of birth, town of birth, country of birth are all correct. And that we did say that we're going to sign the new passport when I receive it. Again, making sure no typos have occurred and that we're happy with the information that we provided about the new passport. And then we get to see our photo. And it is amazing how much a difference a smile can make for a photo as my photo looks very serious and not very flattering, but it meets the conditions of the passport office. So I guess they will do. And then here at the bottom, it says application details. So country or territory you live in, United Kingdom, my address, my contact details. And for progress updates, it says we will send your progress updates via email and text message. And for Braille, you don't require a Braille sticker. Right, so that's all good. We're gonna go ahead and click on continue. What you need to send. You must send original documents. We can't accept photocopies. Your application will be delayed if you don't send everything we need. And for applicants documents, it says send the following, old passport. As my old passport is still valid, the passport office needs it to cancel it and snip the corner before they can issue me with a new passport. I'm gonna go ahead and now click on continue. How should we return your documents? 
Choose how your old passport and any extra documents are sent back to you. Do bear in mind they won't be in the same envelope as your new passport. So for the additional documents we have either a choice of secure delivery for £5 extra or standard post which is free. This is ultimately your choice but on this occasion and every other occasion I've dealt with the British Passport Office I've always made sure that I pay the extra £5 for secure delivery in this case, they use Royal Mail Special Delivery. I think for the peace of mind and the ability to track the delivery makes it worthwhile. And I have heard of people not receiving their old passport because it's sent via standard post. So again, it is your decision, but I think the extra five pound is well worth it. And again, do remember that when it comes to your new passport being delivered, it is sent via secure delivery at no cost. So this question is in relation, again, to your old passport and any other extra documents. So I'll select secure delivery and pay the extra five pounds and then click on continue. So paying for your passport, how to pay? So the passport office accepts Visa, MasterCard, Maestro, Apple Pay and Google Pay, but however, doesn't accept some prepaid cards. And the cost summary for me is the new passport. So that's the standard passport with secure delivery included, which is £75.50. In terms of the additional documents, the old passport will be sent back to me via secure delivery, which costs an extra £5. And there I have the total £80.50. I'll go ahead and click on continue. Declaration. By continuing, you confirm that the information you've given is correct. You agree to the terms and conditions and HM Passport Office will record, store, use and share your data in accordance with their privacy policy. And if you give untrue or misleading information to get a passport, you could be prosecuted. So taking all of that into consideration, I'll click on I agree and then continue to the payment page. So it says it enter payment details. Again, the payment summary and total amount is there for me. And now I have either option of paying with Google Pay or entering my card details. So I'm going to enter my credit card details and then click on continue. So confirm your payment, again it's the total amount £80.50, gives the card number's final four digits, the expiry date and the name on the card. That's all good, so I'm going to go ahead and click on confirm payment. Right, so it says you've paid £80.50. We've saved your application and sent confirmation to your email address. You can also download the confirmation, which is identical to the email you receive. I'm then given the application reference number, which again is in the email that I've also received. And now it says what you need to do. Before we can work on your application, you need to send us your old passport. Use a strong envelope that is the right size for your passport. Check the weight and pay the correct postage. And do consider using signed for delivery. Then I'm given the specific passport address with my reference number included inside of it to send my old passport to. And I will be sending it by special delivery. And here in my scenario, I'm actually applying for my own passport and I've also just assisted my parents with applying for their passports as well. So it is a family application. So I'm going to go ahead and click on if you're applying as part of a family or couple. That's because my parents were both given the same address to send their old passports to. However, I've been given a different address to send my passport to. And because I applied for all three of our passports one after the other, I would have preferred to have sent all three of our passports to just one address. Click on if you're applying as part of a family or couple so you know what to do next. Find out how to send your documents if you're applying as part of a family or couple. So we're gonna click on that link. It opens a new tab and here it says, if you're applying as part of a family or couple, send all the documents together in the same envelope. This helps to keep your applications together, which is important if you have to send the same document for more than one application. How to send your documents. Put all the documents together in a strong envelope. List each application reference number on the front above the address. Where to send your documents. If each person in the group has been given a different address, you can send the documents to any of the addresses we've given you. Although my parents received the same address, I was given a different one. So that answers my query. I can actually send it to any of the two addresses we've been given between the three of us. And if someone has to have their identity confirmed, don't send the documents until their identity has been confirmed. You'll get an email when that's complete and we're ready to receive the documents. All three of our passports are simple renewals. Nobody needs to have their identity confirmed so we can go ahead and send our passports straight away. And then here at the bottom it says track your application. You'll need your application reference number and it's given here. And then you'll have to go to the passportservice.gov.uk tracking website. 
And here's the email that I received after I completed the online portion of my application. It says here, this is your application reference. We've received your passport application. And it simply just reiterates everything that was stated on the online application, the address and how to send the passport, how to track it and confirms the amount I paid for it and has a little feedback section as well. A day later, I also received another automated message which just reinforced the same information as well. I was actually waiting at the time because there were postal strikes going on so I wasn't able to mail out my passport as soon as, as I wanted to. To send the three passports, what I did was I went to my local post office and let them know that I was looking to send three passports to the passport office to be cancelled. And I got from them this silver special delivery envelope, the smallest special delivery envelope. And I confirmed with the representative at the post office that it would be able to hold all three passports with no issues. I then took it home and I printed the address that was given to both my parents since that was the same one. So I thought better to go with that address than the other address that I was given solely. And following the instructions that I mentioned earlier, I printed and sellotaped the reference numbers for all three applications as instructed at the top. I then went back to the post office and I then handed the envelope to the agent at the post office who gave me my receipt and reference number for the envelope so I can then track it and make sure it is received by the passport office. And about a day and a half or two days later, I received this email from the passport office. It says, we've received your old passport. What happens next? We'll check your application and your old passport. We'll contact you if we need more information. And about a week later, I received another email that says your passport application has been approved. What happens next? Your new passport is being printed. We'll let you know when it's ready to dispatch. And then a day after that, I got another email that says your new passport has been printed. What happens next? Your new passport will be transferred to our delivery supply in the next few days. When it's ready for delivery, they will contact you with a tracking reference. Your old passport will arrive separately and could take up to two weeks to arrive. It won't be in the same envelope as your new passport. I also received the same information by text as well at the same time. Later on that same day, I also received the generic email that says, when you get your new passport, you must sign it with a black ballpoint pen. You cannot use it until you do. I then received a text message from TNT, which is the delivery supplier for the new passports. Your HM passport office items are scheduled for delivery today. For more information, please visit the website with a tracking number provided. So I received that text message about 8 a.m. on the day. I received the delivery later on that day. And here are the three passports that I received in three separate envelopes from TNT later that day. And once I open the envelopes, these are the three new blue passports that I received. With the passports, I received a comprehensive instruction guide about the new passport which has several pages of information here are all of the pages that were provided with lots of handy guidance feel free to pause on the selected pages and read at your own leisure And then about a week and a half after receiving the new passports, I received an email from Royal Mail. We received your parcel from the passport office and delivery is due. So I received this the day before the delivery was due and I was given a two hour window for the delivery. And this was because I opted to pay five pound extra for that special delivery option for the return of my old passport. And this is the reason why I highly recommend doing it. So I'm always kept in a loop. I have a tracking number and I can even arrange another delivery date if the one that I was given was not suitable for me. And I received all three passports in individual envelopes within that time window as promised by Royal Mail Special Delivery. And here you can see they've all been snipped and cancelled. And that's how I renewed my British passport. It took just under four weeks, but I also lost a few days because of the Royal Mail strikes. It was way shorter than the advertised 10 week processing time on the website. 
I was happy with the service and information provided to me and I would highly recommend opting in to get the updates via text and email and paying the extra £5 to receive your supporting documents, in this case, our old passports, back via special delivery. I hope you found this comprehensive step-by-step -step video helpful. If you did, please do give it a like and consider subscribing. Do share this video with anyone else you think may benefit from it. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them for me below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.